In this video lecture, I will discuss the transient behavior of circuits, including inductors and resistors. These circuits are also called RL circuits or RL networks. Let us consider a circuit consisting of a current signal source, II, a resistor with a resistance R, and an inductor in parallel to the resistor. with inductance L. Let us assume that the source I sub I generates a step signal. Let's assume that the step signal generated by I I has an amplitude A. We will express I sub I as a function of time as A times the step of T. We will also assume that the current IL flowing through the inductor at time T equal to zero is equal to zero. This means that before the arrival of the step signal, there is no magnetic field inside the inductor. Therefore, for t smaller than 0, IL is equal to 0. II is also equal to 0. Then, IR which is the current flowing through the resistor, which according to Kirchhoff's law for current is given by II minus IL is equal to zero. From this, we get that the voltage VL across the inductor which is the same as the voltage across the resistor, as the two components are in parallel, is given by IR times R, and is therefore equal to zero. For T equal to or larger than zero, I sub I is equal to A. Kirchhoff's law for node A in the circuit can be written as IR plus IL is equal to II, or simply A. Now, IR is equal to VL over R by Ohm's law, but we know that VL in an inductor is given by the inductance L times the time derivative of IL. Now if we replace VL in the expression of the current IR and then replace IR in the Kirchhoff's equation for current, we get L over R, D I L over D T, plus I L equal to A. What we got eventually is a linear, first-order, non-homogeneous, D 
differential equation in IL. The value of IL in zero is called the initial condition for the first order differential equation. The solution of this equation tells us how the current IL flowing through the inductor changes in time when a step signal is applied to the circuit. The solution IL of the equation is given by the sum of a general solution of the homogeneous equation ILH and a particular solution of the equation ILP. As we should already know, the solution of the homogeneous equation is also called the natural response of the circuit, while the particular solution is also called the forced response of the circuit. IL is, of course, the complete solution of the differential equation. Let's start by finding the natural response of the network, ILH. The homogeneous equation is given by L over R times the time derivative of IL plus IL equal to zero. We already know that the solution to the homogeneous equation takes the form ILH of T equal to IL of T equal to A times the exponential of BT with A and B real constants. A, as we know, can be found by taking advantage of the initial condition. In order to find B, we replace IL in the homogeneous equation with the expression we just introduced. If we do that, we get L over R B times A times E to the BT plus A E to the BT equal to zero. We can divide both members of the equation by A times E to the BT And eventually we get B equal to minus R over L. Note that L over R has the dimension of a time, so it's measured in seconds. L over R is typically indicated with the uh, Greek letter tau and is called the time constant of the RL network. Now let's find the particular solution, ILP. We already know that a good guess for the particular solution is a function taking the same form as the input signal. So let's try with ILP equal to A. If we now replace IL with ILP in the non-homogeneous equation, we get L over R, the time derivative of ILP plus ILP equal to A or L over R, the time derivative of A plus A is equal to A. Of course, in this equation, the time derivative of A is zero because A is constant. And this eventually shows that ILP equal to A is a solution of the non-homogeneous equation. ILP equal to A is actually the only particular solution of the non-homogeneous equation.
eventually the complete solution of the differential equation I L of T will be given by the solution of the homogeneous equation A times E to the minus T over tau where tau is L over R plus the particular solution which we found to be A. The complete solution has to comply with the initial condition saying that the current at t equals 0 is equal to 0. So I L in 0 equal to 0 means A times the exponential of minus 0 over tau plus a is equal to zero, which eventually gives a equal to minus capital A. So the final form of I L of T will be minus a times e to the minus t over tau plus a which gives a times 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. This is what we already know as a rising exponential. So, in summary, IL of t is equal to 0 for negative times and is equal to a times 1 minus e to the minus t over tau for t larger than or equal to 0. Of course tau is L over R. In a more compact form I L of t can be written as a times the step of t times 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. If we want to plot I L of t, we just need to follow the rules we discussed in the case of the charge of a capacitor. In the case of that process, the voltage across the capacitor also takes the form of a rising exponential. In the case of a rising exponential, we know that the function tends asymptotically to a value corresponding to the amplitude of the input step. We also know that the rising exponential in the origin is tangent to a straight line intersecting the asymptotic level in t equal to tau. Therefore, I L of t will be 0 up to t equal to 0, then it will start increasing, keeping tangent to the straight line, and will asymptotically tend to A. Note that for t equal to 5 tau, I L of t is equal to A 1 minus E to the minus 5. And the difference between the asymptotic value A and I L of 5 tau is smaller than A over 100. So for t equal to 5 tau, we say that the transient is finished, or, which is the same, the circuit has reached its stationary condition. The stationary condition is the condition in which voltages and currents in the circuit are no longer changing. We have found that after the arrival of the step signal, IL, 
in the circuit is given by A times 1 minus E to the minus D over tau, where tau is equal to L over R. What about VL, the voltage across the inductor, and IR, the current flowing through the resistor? Well, we know that VL of T is equal to the inductance times the time derivative of IL, which gives L A 1 over tau E to the minus T over tau, or A R times E to the minus T over tau. On the other hand, we know by Kirchhoff's law for the currents that IR is equal to II minus IL, which gives A times E to the minus T over tau. We have already seen that as the time increases, IL gets closer and closer to the asymptotic value A, corresponding to the amplitude of the input step signal. On the other hand, both VL and IR, as T goes to infinity, turn to zero. These three final values for IL, PL, and IR represent the stationary condition of the circuit. This is the condition the circuit tends to if we wait enough time. It is in particular worth emphasizing that in stationary conditions, the current flowing through the inductor has the same value as the amplitude of the step signal while the voltage across the inductor is zero. Actually, in stationary conditions, when the current II is equal to A since a long time, everything goes as though the inductor behaved like a short circuit. As a matter of fact, if in our circuit we replace the inductor with a short circuit, then the current IL becomes equal to A because IL is equal to A minus IR and IR is equal to zero. On the other hand, the voltage drop across all the components is zero. This is exactly what we get for T going to infinity. Therefore, we can say that when the transient process is finished and the circuit has reached the stationary condition, the inductor behaves like a short circuit.